The new climbing wall is finished and I've got to say, I'm frothing on it. I'm a huge advocate for having your own climbing wall in your garage if you can or in your living room or wherever it ends up being. If you've got the space and ability and the funds to be able to do it, it is just the most awesome thing. It was quite the process getting it all done. There's a lot that needs to happen to get yourself a little bit of climbing in your garage. So step one in designing your climbing wall is basically measuring out what you've got and then having a think about what you want the space to be able to do. Do we want a climbing wall in there, fingerboards, weights, anything like that. The, the space you've got is really going to dictate what you can do with it. You can be clever with your builds but realistically there's only so much room. So the whole garage measures out to be 5.4 meters wide by 5.5 meters long and we've got 2.7 up to the underside of the trusses and quite a bit of wind outside so hopefully you're not getting too distracted by that. So we did want to have the fingerboards, some weights, kind of stretching area, a 45 and an extra little bit of wall over here. And all those different things have got different size and space requirements so we just worked out like can we put the walls facing each other like a little cave or can they go over here or offset and it took a little bit, but we got there in the end. A few of the other considerations you're going to think about when you're building your climbing wall, the type of climbing that you want to get better at, and the type of climbers that are going to be using the wall primarily. So for us, it's me, I want to climb V15 and climb 36, 37. So that's going to be a hard wall. But we've also got my nine-year-old daughter who's climbing V0, and she's pretty keen to have a bit of a play around on this as well. And then there's my partner, Amanda, who's climbing V8, 28, 29 at the moment and wants to push that another couple of grades. And we also want to be able to do some heart and move sessions and some endurance sessions on here. So really that's going to dictate the type of holds that are going to go on there and the angles and just how it's all going to get set in the end. But we're not quite talking about setting right now. 45 degrees has ended up being a really nice angle for us and just gives us everything that we want. And we've got a few volumes on here as well to give like just that little bit of variation. You can get smaller or more slopey holds on same angle. But if you're climbing somewhere that is like way steeper, maybe you want to set a steeper board or if you're primarily going out somewhere where it's like pretty much vertical everywhere and you don't really have any aspirations to be able to be one of those like crazy cave dwelling boulders, then you probably don't need to go any steeper than like 40 degrees. But entirely up to you and the space that you've got. The dimensions of our board, we have three meters wide and then 45, it's actually 46 degrees just because of some stuff that was going on up there and I was building it all by myself and it just ended up going that way. We got a 300 mil kickboard down the bottom and then up the top we've got that lovely, lovely 20 degree headboard that I just love so much. And for those of you playing at home that were there for the last board as well, I've got that yellow hold back up there. Set a boulder on it yesterday. Oh, I love it. This new wall gives us about half a meter extra climbing length on that 46 degrees, which I'm really excited about. Just, it feels enormously bigger and obviously needed a lot more holds to fill what ended up being about two square meters of extra room. I'm gonna leave a link down below for a guide for how you can build your climbing wall or at least some kind of guidelines for what to look at. There's not quite the time to go into all the details here, but if you wanna know more, click down below. So starting out, I put in my kickboard and it's like, that is our end point. I built the framework out on the driveway, carried it in, which was a total epic and maybe not the smartest idea to have done by myself. And then I hoisted it up into the ceiling and started fixing it off into the trusses and making it all nice and solid. Once you've got the framework all in place, it's time to start sheeting it with your plywood. I marked out, drilled and punched in the T-nuts before the sheets came in here and got screwed out onto the wall. For my spacings, I went with what I did over at the last wall. It's coming down 100 mil on the horizontal and then 200 mil apart for the vertical ones. So you can see here, it's 100 mil down and then 200 mil across to this one. 100 mil down, 200 mil across. And then there's another one here, which is 200 mil down that way, if that kind of makes sense. 
For me this works out really nicely because it gives enough room for the holds to get screwed in there and then you've got a little bit more room for the screw on holds to get in and it just, I don't know, it, it works. And I'm a big advocate for the offset T-nut holes, like if they're just in a grid it feels a bit too much, sort of like a moon board I guess, which isn't, I'm not saying that's a bad thing you moon boarders, but I just like the diversity of movement that you get when you have them offset like that. It works well. I would highly recommend getting a friend to give you a hand getting the sheets up because it's a total epic, but you can manage it yourself. This is the third or fourth time I've done it myself now, so you get your iron for it and work out where to not sit or stand or get your fingers crushed. So once you go around and put a squillion screws in all of these sheets to make sure that they don't fall off onto your head while you're climbing on it, I then go around and put in these offcuts of timber in between the 600 wide framing. Just means that the sheets of ply don't like wibble wobble. You can chuck in noggins in between everything and I've done that in the past but it just ends up being like a full head scratcher to work out where everything's going to exactly be in the end and so I just do that and it works quite well. I then went around and filled all the screw holes with a builder's bog and just cleans it up and just gives it kind of a nicer finish for me. I've not done that in the past and I have done it in the past and I, I had time so I did it. I like it. All that then gets sanded back and then I put on a clear coat clear 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 coat floor sealer uh, and it just gives it like that nice kind of shiny finish and it also means that the skid marks from your shoes don't show up as well and they're much easier to brush off. I'm not a fan of a dirty looking board. If you can keep it nice and clean, it just looks better for me. Turn your phone off, Tom. Mm, pinch and a punch. If you do want more details on how to build your climbing wall, definitely check out that link down below. If the answer's not there, let me know and I'll try and answer the question in a future video. Perhaps it becomes an entire video in itself. Now that the climbing wall is all built, it's time to throw holds on there and I'm gonna make that video very soon. If it's ready to go, it's gonna be right here and you can check it out. Otherwise, more board climbing froth right here. Thanks for watching. See you next time.